Welcome to the Santa Cruz Coffee Break. If you're watching on YouTube or listening on Apple Podcasts, please follow, hit the like button, or any subscribes. It really helps us with the algorithms. Santa Cruz Coffee Break is produced by the Santa Cruz Guitar Players Forum. All opinions are those of the speakers. We invite you to join us on the Santa Cruz Guitar Players Forum at SCGCPF for more fun. Now, let's get on with this installment of Santa Cruz Coffee Break. We would like to welcome everybody to the 68th uh, podcast from the Santa Cruz Guitar Players Forum, Guitar Forum. And today, again, a little variation for us, but something we're really excited about. We're going to get to talk to Matt Chulka from Eddie's Guitars. Uh, a lot, probably a lot about custom instruments and, and Matt's responsibility. I see there's a Richard Hoover's t-shirt there. And... Uh, <laughs> Matt's responsibility is uh, uh, mostly acoustic guitar, so uh, I think he's in the right place. Welcome in, Matt. Thanks so much for having me. I sure appreciate you both. Yeah, we're we're excited for this. Yeah. We've waited a, yeah, we waited a long time. We've been trying to figure out how the dealer thing, how we can talk to dealers. And, you know, and, and everybody's, uh, you know, you don't want to cause divisions or anything like that. You want to keep it all clean, but yet... You guys have a really interesting perspective. Sure. You know, you're you're the touch of the customers. Yeah. You know? I always, always appreciate so much how uh, Richard Hoover is always so outspoken about, you know, support your local guitar shop. You know, we can't can't say how much we appreciate that uh, coming from uh, a company like that, you know, so it's um, it means a lot to us. Yeah. Sustainable dealership. <laughs> indeed indeed you know he we've never talked about that that's a pretty good uh that's a pretty good line for him uh, yeah. well, well Matt, good... tell tell us how you got started with santa cruz when you got to know them uh, and when you got to know richard and all that kind of backstory there sure how'd you, so, get, how'd you get started at eddie's you know sure i i, oh, I started I started here at Eddie's back in 2004, so we're coming up on 20 years pretty quick that I've been at the shop here. Um, and I want to say it was probably about, I'm sorry, let me turn this ringer off. I want to say it was about um, maybe three or four years into me being at the shop that we took on uh, Santa Cruz as a, um, as a vendor for our shop. We became a dealer of theirs. And of course, before then we had had you know used santa cruz guitars come in so i was familiar with the uh exquisite quality of their instruments and i, I really strongly feel even since the you know last 15 years or so since i was kind of in the early exposure of those instruments i feel the uh the, just the quality of the output of what they're doing has continued to exceed itself year after year uh, in what they're doing with the voicing and finishing and, you know, as important as anything is the, uh, you know, the material that, that they're getting a hold of there for, for these special instruments. So um, we uh, became a dealer for Santa Cruz. Like I said, I want to say it was around 2000, probably seven, right in that ballpark. Uh, and early on, you know, we were fairly conservative on how we would order guitars. We weren't really, um, early on positive about how folks would respond and exactly what they would be looking for. We knew that they were big in the folk, you know, scene and the bluegrass community, uh, a lot of finger style folks playing uh, Santa Cruz guitars. And we were conservative at first on how we would order them. We ordered an awful lot of, you know, Sitka Spruce, Indian Rosewood, um, Adirondack and Mahogany, you know, kind of your 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 usual uh, sort of uh, selections and always did well with them. But we, we really saw um, just a huge increase in not only interest, but of course, that results in sales, ultimately, hopefully, uh, when we really started doing um, kind of kind of more specific things and, and, and working um you know really hand in hand with the folks at santa cruz to select these materials and and speak with them on on our expectations and what we were hoping to hear out of the guitar once it was a guitar and um that really is when uh just our relationship together with santa cruz guitar company really just was became supercharged uh and we kind of became an outlet uh for for quite a while where you just couldn't find Santa Cruz guitars like this anywhere else. And, and so we kind of prided ourselves in that 
But um, no, so we do, you know, Santa Cruz, of course, prides themselves and very much so being a custom shop. Uh, and once we really started, you know, uh, flexing that muscle with them, you know, things really took off for us. So it's been a ton of fun. It's it's just so amazing because, it, you know, it, it, it breaks every rule. In the world. I mean, to me anyway, that, oh, no, we're just going to we're going to make what we want to make. And what our customers want to make. And we're is so in touch with it. Mm-hmm. You know, you guys, you guys are the touch. And it, it, that's a really a beautiful thing. Really beautiful. Well, you know, I got to say, I'm I'm uh, humbled that that folks, you know, we saw a lot of guitars. Um, you know, we're, we're based in St. Louis, Missouri here, of course. And we have certainly a local following, a local presence here in St. Louis and sell, you know, a fair amount of guitars here. But of course, our reach spreads far wider than locally, you know, as most you know retailers do nowadays um and so just being able to have folks who do not have the opportunity to come in our shop and sit down and audition some of these guitars trust my input and in saying you know th- this is what i'm hearing you know do with it what you will um that's <laughs> I was talking to somebody literally earlier this morning and um i, I said you know I, I guess I'm technically a, a salesperson here and sell guitars at a guitar store or whatever, but I will just, I'll be just as happy to, to say, I don't think this is the right guitar for you uh, as I would to say, Hey, this is going to be a perfect match for what you're planning to do with it. You know, because it's um, we've got so much great stuff here. If, if one is not necessarily your flavor, we probably have another one that likely is. So uh, I really just kind of put, uh, I could find myself more of a, you know, uh, I hate to say educator, but, but but at least somebody who can convey what, um, what what I'm experiencing when the guitar is in my lap. And then, like I said, the folks, uh, customers or potential customers can kind of do uh, with that information what they want. And if that's the right thing for them, then wonderful. So we'll call you more of an elucidator. <laughs> there you go. I, 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 I was going to say enabler. But... <laughs> I've I've been uh, I've been guilty of that a number of times. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So for those of us who who probably have never been to St. Louis, um, what kind of inventory do you carry? How many instruments? I mean, if I were to walk in there with uh, my my Christmas bonus burning a hole in my pocket. How many guitars would I have to play through in order to? <laughs> oh, boy. Well, that's, you know, what, what we typically do here, um, you know, because of the way our shop is set up, um, we primarily operate on an appointment basis. Uh, and the reason for that is all of our inventory, you will you'll you won't walk into our shop and see a glorious showroom filled with guitars hanging on every wall. Once upon a time, uh, when I first started here uh, back in the early 2000s, that's exactly what this store was. It was it was, a, you know, a candy store of, you know, incredible acoustic and electric guitars. Um, everything was out on the wall. It, when you walked in, it was it was shocking. You know, everything that was just right there for you. Um, our, our business model over the years has evolved quite a bit in that um, we no longer have any big showroom like that. We've got uh, shelving in here, of course, in a very elegant, well-organized, well-maintained way. But we've got shelving here where literally when a guitar comes in, we photograph it, you know, check all the specifications, make sure everything's perfect with the guitar. Uh, and after it's done being photographed, we put it back in its case. The case goes back in its box. And almost as if it were a library, we put it up on the shelf next to its, you know, next to its mates there. And um, they live there until somebody makes an appointment to come try the guitar out. Or uh, if, if somebody buys it online, of course, we ship it out to them. But that helps us maintain meticulous um, just condition of these guitars. We're not really a, a, a scenario where you come in and pick up a guitar and jam. We're not really that shop anyway. Um, but even just a matter of, you know, humidity and dust control and stuff like that, it's it's really been um, in our favor to kind of maintain the instruments this way. And then when folks, uh, you know, you know, wanted to come into St. Louis and, and see what we're what you're dealing with here, uh, we just ask, call us, email us, let you let, let me know. It, it can be as 
as vague as I'm looking for a finger style guitar and here is a rough budget that I'm working with. Uh, it can be as basic as that or it can be as specific as you want to be as far as what it is you're looking for. Uh, and of course, we um, we always encourage folks to look at our website. Every single thing that we have available is there. Photographs, specifications, weights on everything's there. So you can uh, you can do a, a bit of homework even before you come in uh, and kind of know what you're getting into. So nice. what kind of staff? What kind of staff does that take? I mean, that that, that sounds like a, a you know, it sounds like a, a an on on staff photographer. It sounds like, you know, some pretty intense warehouse people to, to keep that that going. Um, I have this funny visualization in my brain of a picture of the guitar on the bottom of the box. You've got the boxes all lined up and there's a little picture of the guitar like it's it's lost and it's in the <laughs> box. <laughs> That's not that's a just, bad idea. Yeah. I was uh, saying, that's just because you're old. They're probably all QR codes. They probably scan them with their yeah, phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, I know. It's just like, I, I could just see this. I could see this wall of 100 guitar, 100 guitar boxes, the bottom of them, and all their little pictures on the bottom. It's kind of like, you know, there's the little soldiers. They're just sitting here waiting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We're asleep inside here, but we'll wake up when you need us. That's, that's, that's... Our, our, our staff here, we've got about nine guys now, which is the, the most that we've ever had employed here at one time. And, and I am dead serious and dead confident in telling you this is the best crew that we've ever had at this shop, period. We've got a really strong crew. Uh, we're fortunate that everybody here is, you know, full time on staff, um, uh, including photographers. We, we all wear at least multiple hats and some of us wear a lot of hats just depending on what's happening throughout the course of the day um but we uh, in fact years ago before we had uh, taken on a few more of the guys that we have now i was doing all the photography <laughs> once upon a time and i'm believe me no photographer so we've really been able to kind of step up our game here and allow uh the folks that work here to really kind of flex their talents that they have we've got a, a great photographer uh, Alejandro is our videographer that we do all the live streams with. He's he's amazing and has really um, upped our uh, video production quality in, in a way that would have taken me decades, honestly, to do myself. Um, so, uh, you know, it just just a great crew all the way around. Uh, and like I said, it, it just, just kind of depends on who's doing what at any given time. We're all able to go run and grab guitars. We're all able to do little, you know, neck tweaks, not necessarily a full refret or a retop, but, uh, you know, we can kind of all do, you know, little setup tweaks that might need to be done. So um, it's uh, it, it's small but mighty staff here of, of about nine of us. Sounds great. And you said you're the acoustic guitar specialist. You also have an electric guitar specialist. Um, we, we've got a couple. Yeah, Granville Helm and uh, and Donnie uh, Thurman are, are both the, the kind of primary guys on the electric guitar end of things. Uh, we've got a gentleman here uh, named Griffin Piazza who does the vast majority of all of our kind of in-store uh, appointments and so on. So he's pretty well versed both on the acoustic and the electric end, but um, I've just really, you know, personally, aside from from, you know, being employed here, just personally have continued to go down the acoustic guitar rabbit hole, you know, and um, uh, try to educate myself as much as I can there. So, um, but yeah, it's 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 really working out well for us. Well, when you um, when you order from Santa Cruz, are you responsible for making those those this wood decision and that and that product and things like that? A hundred percent exclusively. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll sometimes ask input from, from a couple of the other guys here. Hey, is there anything you feel like, you know, we're missing with any particular acoustic line? Um, and, uh, fortunately no is usually the answer. So, <laughs> but, but no, that's, that, that's literally what I do. Um, any, anything that requires, um, 
anything beyond, hey, we want a J45, you know, anything beyond that is is on my plate for for custom ordering. And, you know, it what's what's nice is um, we've really had the opportunity to develop to develop some incredible relationships with, of course, Santa Cruz and, and uh, many of our other acoustic builders, too, that, you know, I, I, I almost liken it to when um, you know, when some of this fabulous uh, reclaimed wood uh, pops up somewhere in the state of California and somebody has the wherewithal to pick up the phone and call Richard Hoover. Um, it's sometimes the same kind of feeling when um, it may be, you know, Will at Santa Cruz or one of the guys, at, at, at one of the other uh, you know, companies that we uh, represent, uh, they'll say, hey, we just got in a stack of whatever or a, just a one top of this you really ought to look at this and and so that just really gets our juices flowing as far as you know getting the imagination going man what would this pair well with and what kind of player do you imagine this being in the hands of and so it, it, it's all a ton of fun and, and quite honestly um aside from the, a lot of the video work that we do here in our in our demos and our live streams the ordering of the guitars and the communication that i get to do with these companies is the very best part of it well, and you're getting uh, one or maybe more of these special NAM guitars that Richard is building. We're calling uh, them vault guitars. Yeah, we, we are. And, and, and I hate to say, I don't have all the details on exactly what those are yet. I'm not sure if anybody does at this point, but we're, uh, I don't know if patiently, but we're waiting to find out what, what those are going to be. <laughs> So, yeah, that's a situation where Richard decides, I want to build, you know, and then uh, the office is like, okay, now we got to find somebody uh, <laughs> who wants to buy this. And uh, I well, would imagine you would jump on an opportunity like that. We, we do. You know, when, when there's, uh, I mean, these are instruments and they're meant to be played, obviously, but when there's a, a special story behind an instrument, that sure makes everybody feel warm and cozy. And believe me, I, I love that as much as everybody else. And when, when you're able to say, hey, uh, you know, Richard picked this stuff, he specified this, this stuff, um, this is kind of his baby, you know, um it, it's a pretty special thing and you know he's got <laughs> as, as we all know a tremendous influence over the the little world that we kind of exist in here and uh uh and i'm, I'm glad for that well so let's let's take a, a a scenario here let's say for some strange reason uh i get up christmas morning and open an envelope from my wife and it says uh Call Matt at Eddie's and go ahead and order that Santa Cruz you wanted. <laughs> Tell me how you work with a customer who calls you up and is interested in getting a custom Santa Cruz made. Sure, sure. Well, you know, and of course, when when folks come into that scenario, come to me with that scenario, uh, again, there are, are varying different uh, levels of experience with ordering a custom guitar. Uh, confidence in ordering a custom guitar, sometimes based on their experience. And, um, you know, we, we, we very carefully take all of those things into play. And, you know, I, I usually ask folks exactly those things, you know, do you own a Santa Cruz? Have you played a Santa Cruz? Um, you know, why do you want this? I'm not trying to necessarily qualify them, but I'm, I'm making sure that the end thing that, that he or she ends up with is, is the, the keeper, you know, um, I usually say, do you have any, you know, rough draft of specifications, any ideas that you're starting with here and, and start there. And then usually, you know, I shouldn't say usually, but it's not necessarily uncommon that someone will come to me and say, uh, Hey, I think that this is what I want. This is what I'm planning to do. And, and after having a, a thorough conversation, we can determine what you had in mind it certainly wouldn't be bad, but it might not be the ideal thing for what you're looking for. Uh, and uh, whether and, and usually it, it boils down to, you know, guitar shape and size and uh, soundboard material or the kind of the common uh, things that maybe will shift a little bit throughout the course of, of talking about a custom order. But it's, it's a little different for every every customer because, you know, everybody's got a little bit different background and and, and why they want a custom guitar made for them, you know. Um, but yeah, I, I usually just try to get as much out of them as they think that they want and then sort of 
you know, tactfully, I think, uh, say, why do you want those things? And just make sure everybody's on the same page in terms of, um, you know, what, what to expect here. Right. How, how often do you have to deal with people who say to you, well, I heard on the forums that I want, you know, Brazilian rosewood, or I want uh, Adirondack, or I want Engelman, or, you know, whatever. Is that a problem when people come to you that they have some uh, expectations based on uh, dot, <laughs> dashes coming through a, a video screen? You know, um, not necessarily a problem. Um, you, you have to put into perspective sometimes to folks that um, there's a lot of chatter out there on the internet, you know, and in and, 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 and every, you know, in every angle of it, but it, there, there's a lot of chatter in the acoustic guitar corner of the internet and uh, some folks with some awfully strong opinions. Um, and I hate to say some folks with some rather undereducated opinions in some cases, and, and you have to, even myself, when I'm doing research on things that maybe I haven't really had my hands on before, I've got to really be careful about how seriously I take some of it, you know, because, um, you know, there's just a lot of rather uneducated opinions out there I've, I've found but um and, and again that's that's why i always in the videos that we do we always try to you know kind of preach that um you know w as soon as you think you know everything you realize you know nothing kind of thing almost you know but um <laughs> no not not a problem but sometimes you have to kind of dispel some of the um you know myths out there if you will kind of thing and and uh kind of bring it back down to earth a little bit. But I, I think a lot of the folks that we deal with um, kind of understand that at least, or, or, you know, once you, once you explain it to them, they, they understand kind of where you're coming from on it. But um, we, we to just give you a singular example. We had a gentleman um, uh, asking about a, a flat picking guitar and uh, wanted to have an OM built with a redwood top. And I said, I'm not telling you an OM with a redwood top can't flat pick, but if that's going to be your primary goal for this guitar, we should probably, we should probably take a couple steps back. And, uh, and uh, how did you get to this point? You know, of, of thinking this is what you wanted. And uh, and by the end of that conversation, we were no longer talking about an OM. We were no longer talking about a redwood top. Uh, and they had gone a couple other directions too, but it, it, it can be, um, and, and it's, it's so awesome, you know, for, for me, because folks are thanking you. I'm so glad I called you and, and we had this conversation it, it, and it's, it's great because, um, you know, just kind of makes you feel good. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, and after having all this experience of um, playing, sampling, trying, you know, God knows how many Santa Cruz guitars came through the shop, mm -hmm. you had the opportunity to order your own custom, which is pretty unique. I mean, with your experience and your background, tell us a little bit about uh, the choices you made, what you chose, and uh, let's talk about, it's, how, it's been, what, a year and a half, two years? I don't know. Oh, boy. <clears throat> That was built back in 2018. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. So we're 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 about five years deep now. So so that is a Santa Cruz FS or finger style model. Um, and and we had carried the you know the FS model in here for, for years. And I had played, you know, the typically Western Red Cedar and Indian Rosewood, fabulous guitar. I love the story behind the guitar and kind of how it was developed. Um, and who it was developed for, you know, kind of the, the you know, a lot of the kind of Wyndham Hill inspiration uh, right. folks that, that kind of inspired that model in a lot of ways. Um, we had done a number of custom variations as we tend to do, you know, we'll, we'll kind of take the, the, the stock ingredients and, and switch up all sorts of things while trying to still very much so keep it in the spirit of whatever the original model is. Um, so we would do uh, you know, European spruce tops and Coco Bolo and, you know, uh, Engelman spruce and Brazilian rose with just all sorts of different combinations. And I've, um, I I've been a, a big fan of Honduran mahogany for a long time for, you know, back and sidewoods. Um, and I particularly like 
Honduran mahogany guitars that have perhaps a bit more spaciousness around their sound, a little bit more of a, of a glisten around their sound than like a real bone dry sounding mahogany guitar. And I, I love a dry mahogany guitar too, just for what I do, um, you know, for my personal playing. Um, I, I like a, you know, a, a rich guitar, but I, I just love the fen uh, the fundamental quality that, that mahogany tends to give you. So we built a, fs model with a uh moon spruce top i i just love the moon spruce that that santa cruz does i've all, we've been getting it for years from them and it's fabulous um with hunter and mahogany on the back and sides uh that guitar comes standard with brazilian rosewood uh binding on the body but we extended the brazilian rosewood binding onto the fingerboard and headstock that guitar comes standard with the incredible blue purfling and the blue rosette. Um, and I asked them, uh, this is when Carolyn was still with Santa Cruz and um, shout out to Carolyn, one of my all time favorites. Um, she, um, I was speaking with her and I said, what if, what if we uh, extended the blue purfling onto the fingerboard and headstock? And she said, we can do that. We never have done it, but we can do it. And um, and so they they got the right sized, you know, strips of purfling for the fingerboard and headstock. And it's such a beautiful, subtle little thing. And you really kind of have to get up on it to really see it. You won't see it from, you know, 10 feet or 15 feet out necessarily, but it's such a fine detail. Um, it's got a Brazilian rosewood fingerboard and headstock and bridge. So they they spoiled me big time on some of the little little trinkets on the guitar and and just beautiful wood grain on it uh but but the way that that blue purfling um kind of flowed in with the brazilian rosewood it was just so sharp and, and great looking headstock the uh the bracing we switched up a little bit as well now typically the fs guitars have a tapered brace design mm -hmm. and because we were using a, you know, probably brighter than usual, you know, the moon spruce is a bit brighter sounding top uh, to my ear than the Western red cedar. And, uh, you know, the mahogany was not going to necessarily contribute a ton of, you know, bass presence on its own necessarily. I asked them to scallop the braces rather than do tapered. And, and my, my, theory, you know, in my head, not necessarily in theirs, but my theory uh, myself was that should increase the bass response as well as just simply lighten up the top because it's less, you know, less material on those braces. Sorry, I'm trying to mute this phone. Um, and, um, and the way it turned out was magnificent. I mean, you can feel the top move on that guitar when, when you're, and, and you don't have to play it hard to get it to, to do that. It's just a, an incredibly responsive guitar. Uh, great sustain. You know, mahogany is not necessarily known for being the most dramatic sustaining wood out there, but it's got just great sustain. And and as important as anything um, was, I, I wanted that that spacious kind of harmonic complexity sort of kind of radiating around the guitar, and it absolutely does that. Um, just just a just a great feeling guitar. Great neck on that FS model too. That's one of my favorite necks that they do. It's really nice. You went, you went with the one in 13 16s? I did, yeah. And and I really like the, um, I like a wide bridge spacing. So I asked them to do two and five sixteenths down at the bridge. And, and it just feels awesome. It, it, it feels like a, like you're on the highway all by yourself. You just got plenty <laughs> of space. <laughs> <laughs> well, so it's been five years. What, um, what if, what are your feelings about how it's opened up or how it's changed or or how or maybe how you've changed? I'm not sure. <laughs> well, I'm sure we've both done uh, at least a little bit of changing. The guitar has certainly opened up, and you know when I, when I first got it, the just the the balance it had, uh, and that was the, one of the first comments I gave to to Carolyn uh, after I took delivery of it. Um, the balance the guitar had when it was brand new was off the charts. I mean, you could play it anywhere up high on the neck and it would ring clearly down low. Uh, and, and it just was a very, it was like a, a really in the pocket sounding guitar. It just didn't, didn't do anything you didn't really want it to do, but it was still really dynamically lively. Um, as it's, 
you know, kind of loosened up and opened up a bit, I, um, I, I've definitely noticed, you know, the low end, you know, getting more substantial, the mid range getting more substantial, which I really like hearing. Uh, and, and the trebles are just have this beautiful sparkle to them that um, I, I kind of hope they stay right where they're at because the trebles are perfect and it really sweet sounding. Um, but it, it's it's just kind of gotten a little bit more supple feel, you know, over over the last five years or so. And it, it you can you can feel that it's it never felt tight by by any means at all. Don't misunderstand me, but it it's it's acquired a little bit more of a supple feel. Um, I, and I've got to say, I I most often keep um, pretty much all my guitars, not not just that one, but um, pretty much everything, at least like a full step down, like a D standard is kind of where I start. Um, and, and that's one of those guitars that uh, yeah, I, I keep low tension parabolics on it. And even a full step down, low tension parabolics are just incredible on that guitar i've tried the the mediums a couple times the mid tensions not bad at all but but there's just something about those low tensions on that guitar that are that they're just right so um yeah. yeah it's it's a neat guitar it's the only mahogany guitar that i've got um not not to say i'll never have another but uh it, it's exactly what i want in a mahogany guitar because it's it, it does a little bit of everything it's called a finger style model but i'll tell you it will hang with a lot of great dreads out there because it's that tight waist the shallower body it does have when you when you dig into it a little bit it does have a a, a mid-range quality that that kind of barks which is pretty cool i remember when you got that guitar because i was intrigued because f is just a wonderful model and it's the first one i've heard of made in mahogany i'm sure they they've made one or two others but i've never had an opportunity to get my hands on one um so yeah, I was quite intrigued with that. It's good to hear. It sounds like uh, your Santa Cruz experience is what I would expect. Is is starts out great and just manages to get greater. Well, and and to your point um, regarding other mahogany F or FS models, um, it, it's very flattering. Um, of course, when I get that guitar, not long after, somebody will ask, "Well, can I get one? How much is it?" You know uh after hearing it especially and um which is which is very flattering and, and hopefully is for santa cruz as well um but we've had i want to say maybe four maybe five very similar if not identical to mine built for customers um so they've they've seen what i've done and been able to in some cases even come in our store and play it for themselves and say hey maybe i want a one and three quarter nut instead but otherwise keep everything the same and uh, so, so we've done a few variations of those for folks who all still have them or all still really happy with them. So pretty ah. cool. Perfect. So yeah, people can just sort of call uh, call you up and order a Chilka special. And there you go. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> with, with 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 fries. Um, I, I'm 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 looking at your your website here. Just for me. <laughs> I'm, I'm a yeah, just, just just for me. I'm I'm a real fan of the used market, and you know, as it as it continues to dry up, um, have you had what really cool guitars have come through there? Have you had a pre-war? Have you had a pre-war D forty five? No, no, that's not true. We have actually that it was it was before my time here, believe it or not. Um, it was it was a few years before I, I want to say around the year 2000, maybe 2001. Um, we, you're not going to believe it. We brought in uh, a 1937 D45 S. And when I say D45 S, I'm not talking about the 12 fret guitar. I'm talking about the 14 fret wide body guitar which they made about i think four of that year uh very rare guitar unfortunately like i said that was before my time here so i didn't get my i probably wouldn't have been brave enough to touch it anyway frankly but um but that's one that came through um what else have we had man i'll tell you we had a this sounds like a for a pre-war guitar it sounds like a modest uh guitar perhaps but um 
we had a 1937 0018, you know, 14 fret 0018 uh, that really knocked my socks off. And and I was trying uh, every everything I could to, to get some money together to buy that thing. And it didn't end up working out, sadly. But I know who got it. Uh, and, and I'm good with who got it. <laughs> and um, but but that was a really special one, too. It's cool. You know, there, there, there is. I think there is life in these instruments, you know, and I, I do think that the stories behind them and, and, and things like that. I, I love, I love the Marty Stewart, you know, the Marty Stewart stories and all that. Yeah. And, and, and what Neil Young's done with, you know, what he's collected, you know, and things Absolutely. like that, you know, and it, it, that, that's good stuff. I, 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 I'm not sure about Bonamassa, you know, it just <laughs> seems like, it just seems like, oh yeah, I'll take it. I'll take it. You I'll and me it. both. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. I mean, he's a, a wonderful, wonderful, um, wonderful player, and uh, really good for the the market. But I, mm. I'm not. I, I don't know how many you need. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't know if you need them all. All this, I I, I follow more electric. I, I follow acoustic really closely but i do follow electric a little bit you know this guy in the uk that supposedly has 300 bursts oh wow <laughs> 300 of the 1200 you know i was gonna so say he, yeah that's he's, uh, got, he's got 25 percent of them <laughs> and unreal who knows, if, who knows if it's true you know he's, he's way yeah. underground and it's it's that kind of a thing but yeah it, 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 it's so fascinating that it, obviously this probably wasn't a career choice for you getting out of school you know and, and it's fascinating how people fall into this fall, fall, fall into things like this how'd you fall in how'd, how'd you just walk in there and go i gotta work here <laughs> Well, uh, yes, that is exactly how it worked out, actually, believe it or not. Um, wow. So I was... Um, I had that feeling. I, I need to look up what the band was, but I was I was following a band, and, and I was, what was I, 19 at the time, so I wasn't too far out of high school. Um, sure. And I was on their website when websites back, you know, in, you know, 2000, whatever, were what they were back then and they they had a, a portion on their website that said gear used and uh, i thought oh this is interesting uh and and was looking at the amplifiers and i saw on that list dr z amplifiers the dr z amplifiers that's a weird name and so of course typed in dr z amplifiers into the computer and saw these beautiful amps boutique amplifiers and amps that i never knew existed never knew anybody made or played or wasn't familiar with them in the slightest amount and they had a dealer page and here's eddie's guitars on their dealer page and at that time i was living about oh 45 minutes uh west of where the shop is here uh in the suburbs and i i thought i'm gonna drive out there and i'm gonna check those amplifiers out uh and and literally i am not exaggerating um as, as i mentioned the guitar the store used to be loaded completely from from ceiling to floor, uh, all walls, just with guitars everywhere. I opened that door and uh, just kind of did a quick 360. And uh, they said, hey, can we help you? What are you looking for? And I, I said, are you guys hiring by chance? I completely <laughs> forgotten about the amplifiers that I had gone in there to look at. And uh, fortunately, uh, Ed Edwin Putney, Ed Putney of Eddie, uh, he happened to be um, standing behind the counter, which I later found out was was rather uncharacteristic so i i then realized how how serendipitous this all must have been but uh he happened to be standing behind the counter and, and said yeah come in we'll 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 talk with you and a couple of weeks later i i was there and i've been here ever since <laughs> oh, but cool. yeah it, you know i i was in in high school uh even even out of middle school and getting into high school i hate to say i was um not necessarily a troublemaker. I just didn't care about school. <laughs> I just didn't. And I, I didn't really have any aspirations of, um, you know, continuing my education outside of high school. And I thought, 
you know, and, and at the time it wasn't necessarily totally wrong. I certainly was not a musical prodigy of any kind, but I was pretty good at guitar for a high school kid at the time. And I thought I can do something with this, you know, that doesn't require a real job, you know, uh, or so I thought. And um, so that was kind of my attitude at the time for better or worse. And so when I, when I, you know, came into this guitar store and thought, people can make money at, at this and it's not going down playing a, a crappy gig every, you know, Friday night or whatever. Uh, it, 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 um, it was just kind of an eye opener and I, I wasn't really trying to get a retail job necessarily either, but um, I just saw the stuff and the passion and um, uh, it just was really hooked immediately on it. And, um, and like I said, just was, was, really determined to educate myself on the stuff that we have here um so i i would i would call tom anderson and say why do you use that goto bridge you know just just stupid things to to figure out why you know and um but um fortunately folks were patient enough you know with me to you know help educate me along the way so <laughs> wow Nice. Well, that, it, it, that's that's really great. I mean, that that is, it's great when somebody finds walks into what they're supposed to do. Yeah, it, I, 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 I I think about all the time how it could have gone a lot of different ways, and my life would probably be real different if, if that had not worked out the way it had. But yeah. and 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 you're surrounded with what you love. Yeah, you better believe it. Yeah, you're surrounded with what you love. Well, so do you have any thoughts or, uh, about what the market is doing or what you see the market doing in the next few years? Um, like, are you seeing more acceptance of domestic woods as opposed to mm -hmm. exotics? And, uh, you know, what do you what are you noticing just that, you know? Well, yes and no. You know, it, 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 to, in my experience, um there's a lot that goes into or there's a lot that's thought of in terms of the tradition, you know, of these instruments. And, um, you know, traditionally speaking, uh, you know, Santa Cruz has has really done an incredible job of, of you know, working with reclaimed woods and so on. Um, you know, some of the more domestic woods, it's I, I think we're starting to make an impact as far as, hey, this is really legitimate stuff here. I'm having a, a, uh, a walnut back and side guitar built right now for myself, um, that I'm, I'm super excited about. And it's, it's a beautiful domestic abundant wood, you know, that, that we should be using. Um, and I, I think we're, we're starting to get some headway there, but you can't deny, you know, when you see a beautiful, you know, slab of Brazilian rosewood or Madagascar rosewood, whatever it is, you, it's, it's hard to deny that too. <laughs> Uh, and I've got to tell you, for, from from my perspective, at least on the acoustic end of things, it seems like the highest end, most exclusive, um, most impossible to get is the stuff that people are just beating the door down to get to. You know, we, we got in our very first uh, ancient cowrie guitar from Santa Cruz just a few weeks ago. It's already spoken for. Um, I admittedly was a little conservative on not ordering that for a while because it's a, a fairly expensive tone wood. And I, I just didn't have the experience myself to say, yes, we should, uh, we should get these for the shot. I didn't know what they sounded like. I'd never played one. Um, and finally bit the bullet and, uh, and ordered a couple of them. I can't tell you how regretful I was that I didn't order one 10 years ago or whenever they found that stuff in the first place. Uh, after hearing that guitar for the first time, and it's it's a it, uh, it's a premium guitar in terms of price, to be sure, um, and and it seems like that's the stuff that people are are the most excited. And, and yes, I've got I've got to get that. Um, and it, it's it's tones that, quite frankly, and I don't mean to sound cheesy, but you know, I know I know who I'm amongst here. It's tones that you cannot achieve other ways. You know, it, it's it's unique things that. Uh, it, you know, it becomes that way for a reason. And uh, that calorie, man, I'll tell you what, I hope hope we're able to get a lot more of that stuff from Santa Cruz. That's awesome stuff. 
Um, it, it's uh, it, they, they, they're they're they're. I was, uh, you know, we were talking off camera before we got started about where it was uh, this morning, and I saw a huge plank of it. Um, really, a, a pretty amazing. Um, it's incredibly light. Yeah, in not incredibly light. Uh, really, you see this giant piece of wood, and you go, "Wow!" Hmm. Um, the the rarity is, yeah, it's crazy. It, apparently, one of the uh, and and Richard said this in the last one, so we'll say it. But apparently, one of the vault guitars is um, a walnut. Mm, good, good. Yeah, um, and he and he described how they came to this grafting and everything that they had to do to create this tree, and mm. it's they they're they if you don't if you're not in California if you don't know that Central Valley if you don't see it a lot it's all walnut trees. Mm. Used you know, to be all it used to be it still is kind of in in, in certain in, in a lot of areas, but it, it it's a lot of walnut trees and. You take them down after 10, 15 years because they stop producing as much. Mm -hmm. um, you get to this one place uh, in Spreckles called Spreckles where Spreckles sugar, that's where it is. And there is a avenue of these trees, maybe 60 feet tall. Wow. You know, maybe yeah. nine feet, nine feet around. Wow. You know, yeah and and when one falls storm or something like that it's the salvage for that tree is is really amazing and yeah i i think richard has spidey senses and i think he's got sensors all around <laughs> you know like every river every river mouth richard's been there and he's he's put the the whatever it is in in the ground and as soon as something goes by it sends him a signal that says yeah find this it's out come there get me. Now. come, come get, get me, me. yeah it's out there. It's, that, it's that old story if a tree falls in the forest and there's no one there to hear it at least richard does yeah. <laughs> i will be stealing that yeah <laughs> it, 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 he, he has a wood problem for sure um we so I'm one last bad. important question. It's now what the beginning of December practically. Yeah. If uh, you know somebody really wants to have a new uh, Santa Cruz guitar or another brand under their Christmas tree, how late can they order from you? <laughs> Absolutely. So so we ship out of here every single day uh, that that you know we're, that we're open for business. So you know. Theoretically, depending on where you're at, you know, up until just a few days before, you know, the holidays at the end of the month, um, we we can certainly accommodate, you know, we we do expedited shipping, of course, and um, we, we ship quite a few guitars out of here on a daily basis. So we're very, of course, as you would hope, well versed on how to pack everything correctly and, and get it to you safely. So, um, yeah, I mean, honestly, up and, you know, through the 20th maybe even the 21st we could we could make it happen so you want to be Although, careful with that Ke yeah Dad, I was say, wanna... people need to let those guitars sit for at least two days before they put yeah, them under the that's, tree that's Bingo. what i was gonna tell you is you gotta remember uh, remember the one guy on this shoulder that says open it nobody <laughs> nobody's gonna know and the guy on this shoulder going pay attention don't do it open it yep. don't do it open it <laughs> Excellent. Well, listen, Matt, it's been absolutely wonderful to talk to you. I hope you have a fantastic holiday. I hope the shop has a fantastic holiday. And uh, we will have to catch up uh, maybe next year when you get a uh, Nam guitar in to show off. I would absolutely love that. Fantastic. Oh, and, and I assume the Nam guitar isn't spoken for since you don't know exactly what you're getting yet. Um. It, 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 not not spoken for yet on our end of things so we'll we'll, Good. we'll time time will tell there you go so stay in touch with matt you may be able to uh grab a very special instrument indeed thank you both so much i sure appreciate the uh the opportunity to, to chat with you here it was wonderful thanks. talking to you thanks taking thanks for taking time in your day yeah thank you yeah all right be well 
Take care. We hope you enjoyed this installment of the Santa Cruz Coffee Break. For more music-related fun, please join the Santa Cruz Guitar Players Forum at scgcpf or santacruzguitarplayers.com. If you have any questions or possible podcast topics, please contact us. If you have a product or service that you feel would be of value to our listeners, please consider adding your support and keeping the coffee pot on. Contact us for more information. We ask that you hit the like, follow, bell, or bookmark buttons so we can keep you informed of upcoming podcast episodes. We hope you enjoyed Santa Cruz Coffee Break. Now it's time to go play your guitar.